Hello everyone, Soberoni of g and Reviews here, bringing you another event guide, this time for the upcoming event in FGONA, the Summer Servant Festival. Just like with all my guides, this is going to be a very in-depth look at the event, covering everything from the new event servants and craft essences to the most complete farming strategies. So to make things a bit easier, I've included timestamps in the description down below so you can jump ahead to whichever portion of the video you need the most. I should also mention that in order to participate in this event, all you need to do is clear for Yuki, which is the first chapter of the game, so this event is open to all new players. However, unlike most of the previous events, this event is rather complicated. So complicated, in fact, that this is only going to be part one of a two-part guide. This part is going to focus on the first half of the event, as well as the essentials like the event structure, the new servants and craft essences, the farming strategies, and the story. Part two will be out later in the week, and it's going to cover the second half of the event, as well as all the miscellaneous stuff like how to unlock the costumes, the command codes, the mystic codes, and the challenge quests. So do look for Forward to that. But without further ado, let's jump right into it by talking about the new event servants. Now this is a summer event which means there's going to be a ton of new servants. So let's start off first with our welfare servant, Jean de Arc Alter Berserker. Jalter is a 4 star berserker with a max attack of 10,298 and a max HP of 9,922. As a welfare servant it means that she's free to everyone who participates in the event so long as you complete the story. And she makes for an excellent boss killer, so if you're in the market for a high damage single target NP servant, I highly suggest picking her up. Next up we have our gotcha servant, starting off with the 5 star Jean de Arc Archer. She is a 5 star archer servant with a max attack of 10,525 and a max HP of 15,743. Jean's major strength is her farming capabilities, she's one of the best arts farmers in the game, and very capable of spamming and looping her noble phantasm. So if you're looking for a good farmer, especially for Gilfest, then I highly recommend rolling for her. Next up we have the 4 star Ibaraki Doji Lancer. She is a Lancer class servant with a max attack of 9133 and a max HP of 12354. Ibaraki is a very balanced servant who excels at all areas of combat, but she's especially strong in NP spamming and critting, so if you need a good offensive lancer, she's definitely worth rolling for. And finally we have the 4 star Ushiwakamaru Assassin. She is an Assassin class servant with a max attack of 9456 and a max HP of 10580. What stands out about Ushiwakamaru Assassin is that she's actually a very capable farming servant, which is very rare among the Assassin class. So if you don't already have Semiramis, it may be worth picking her up as she can drastically improve your farming game. If you'd like a more in-depth look at any of these four new servants, I actually have full-on spotlights covering all of them in detail linked in the description down below, so check those out if you haven't already. In addition to those new servants, we're also going to be getting a banner containing Caster Gill, Dantes, and Robin Hood. All three of them are very strong servants and I highly recommend going for Dantes if you already have Scotty, as he's going to be an excellent pickup for the upcoming Gilfest. On top of all of those new servants, we're also going to receive a whole batch of new craft essences as well. Three new event shop CEs and three gacha CEs. Starting off with the gacha CEs first, we have the 3 star all night fever. This increases your NP gain and crit strength by 5%. It also increases the guild currency drop rate by 1. This is a pretty good budget CE for crit servants who rely on their noble phantasm, like Emiya, Ku Prototype, and Shiki. Next up we have the 4 star Storm and Stress. This one increases your Buster Card effectiveness, NP strength, and NP gain by 8%. It also increases the Mimi currency drops by 1. Another really good CE that's especially good on Buster and P spammers like Gil, Mecha Ellie, and Musashi. And finally the last gacha CE is the 5 star Emerald Float. This CE increases your arch card effectiveness and NP strength by 15% and also increases the BB currency drops by 1. This is an exceptionally strong and flexible craft essence that works very well on arch spammers and servants who have a mixed deck like Abby, Summer Jean, and Kuro. Moving on to the event shop CEs, we have three of them and they're all 5 stars. First up we have the 5 star Lady Foxy. This craft essence increases your NP gauge by 4% per turn, increases your NP strength by 15%, and applies damage cut 100. It also increases the drop rate of the hat points by 30%. 
This is a good but niche craft essence that works well on servants who have a strong noble phantasm but low NP gain, like Abigail and Summer Maeve. Next up, we have the 5 star Painting Summer. This one increases your Archcard effectiveness and NP gain by 8%. It also increases your NP gauge by 30% at the start of the battle, and increases the Paper Point drops by 30%. This is an insanely good craft essence for any kind of Arts NP spammer like Ryoma, Hokusai, or Summer Jean. And finally, we have the 5 star Water Shine. This craft essence applies Shore Hit, increases your Crit Strength by 15%, and grants 3 Crit Stars per turn. It also increases ink point drops by 30%. Another niche craft essence, but it can work well on crit servants like Okita, Ku Prototype, and Summer Ibaraki. In addition to these 6 craft essences, there's also 3 more gacha CEs and 3 command codes. But for time reasons, I'm going to cover those in part 2. But just know that those other craft essences also boost currency drop rates, so you can choose to roll for either gacha if you're looking for CEs. And just like with all events, there's of course going to be an event shop. There's going to be three different currencies for this event, those being the BB dollars, which are the gold currency, the Mimi dollars, which are the silver currency, and the Gil dollars, which are the bronze currency. With the Gil currency, you can purchase three copies of the Lady Foxy CE, as well as Black Grease, Seeds of Yudrissel, Evil Bones, Saber, Archer, Lancer, Assassin, and Berserker Blue Gems, Foes, and EXP. With the Mimi currency, you can purchase three copies of Painting Summer, as well as Longunos, Aurora Steel, Eternal Frost, and Saber, Archer, Lancer, Assassin, and Berserker Red Gems. Finally, with the gold currency, the BB Dollars, you can purchase three copies of Water Shine, one copy of the Jet Black Feather Pen, which is an ascension item for Jolter, Scarabs of Wisdom, Bicorn Horns, Seashells, and Saber, Archer, Lancer, Assassin, and Berserker Gold Gems. If you plan to buy out the entire shop, you're going to require 5,800 Gil Dollars, 4,000 Mimi Dollars, and 4,200 BB Dollars. I should also note that while there's only 3 copies of each CE available in the shop, you can get rewarded with 2 more copies of each CE by getting points from the event. So you should be able to max limit break all 3 event craft essences without having to farm for them. So with that said, let's take a look at the point system and the event structure. Okay, now let's talk about what I'm sure is going to be the most confusing part for a lot of people participating in this event, and that is the event structure. It is very different from any other event in FGO, so I'm going to try my best to break it down as simply as I can. But if you have any questions about the event, make sure you ask me in the comments down below. There are two major systems in this event, the Point Ladder and the Night and Day Loop. The Point Ladder system is very similar to other events, for example like Apocrypha. Except in this event, there are going to be three Point Ladders instead of one, and all three of them are going to use different currencies. There's going to be Hat Points, Ink Points, and Paper Points. You can acquire these points by beating Free Quest, and each of the Point Currencies drop from different Free Quests. We'll go more into detail on that in the farming section, but all you need to know is that as you reach certain milestones on the point ladder, you get rewards automatically, like mana prisms, QP, craft essences, and ascension mats. For example, at 100,000 ink points, you'll get a copy of the Water Shrine craft essence. You will need a million of each point in order to clear the ladder, so 3 million points total. In addition to the rewards that you collect for getting points, some free quests and story quests only become available after obtaining a certain amount of points. For example, getting 200,000 total points will unlock a new story quest. Because of this, it's important to diversify your point collection as certain quests and events require certain amounts of each point to open. In other words, don't just farm one point at a time until you get to a million. You're better off farming each point in segments. So for example, first farming 100,000 ink points, then 100,000 hat points, then 100,000 paper points, etc. The other major system in this event is the night day cycle. This event is going to be split into 7 days in game. Each day has a daytime and a nighttime, and beating a free quest will cause 12 hours to pass. So every time you beat 2 free quests, a new day begins in the game. For example, if it's daytime of day 1 and you beat 1 free quest, it'll become nighttime day 1. Then if you beat another free quest, it'll become daytime of day 2. 
so on and so forth, pretty similar to Majora's Mask. And then on day 7, a zero AP quest will appear. Once you complete it, you are going to be looped back in time to day 1, and you will have to replay the entire week again up until day 7. But you will keep all of your progress in terms of points. You will then continue to loop again and again and again while you're collecting more and more points. As you get more points, different events will start to appear on different days. So the more you loop, the more the story progresses, and the more free quests become available. It's important to try and not overthink this mechanic, because all you really need to do is keep farming and keep looping. That's it. Let's talk about the story quest. In terms of difficulty, even though this event is accessible to newer players, it is a fair bit more difficult than normal events, mostly due to many enemy bosses having break bars and being a foreigner class or some other extra class. But don't worry, a good support alter ego or ruler can really carry you through this event. So if you are able to clear London, this event shouldn't be an issue for you. And if you have her, I highly recommend bringing Mecha Ellie into this event because she turns most of those foreigner bosses into a joke. As mentioned earlier, story progression is tied to how many total points you've collected as well as the date. Certain story events will only appear after you've collected a certain amount of points and reached a certain day. For example, this story quest on screen right now doesn't unlock until you have a total of 300,000 points and you are on noon of day 4, which means you will need to continuously farm free quests and loop on the 7th day until you meet that criteria. So if you miss a certain story quest on a certain day, you need to go through the loop cycle again. But don't worry, because once you have enough points, the story quest will automatically appear, so you can't miss it. In total, in order to complete all of the main story quests, you will need roughly about 900,000 total points across the hat, ink, and paper points. And speaking of looping, as I mentioned, on day 7 a zero AP quest will appear that you must do in order to reset the week and start farming again. But there isn't just one zero AP quest, there are many, and depending on which one you do, you can be rewarded with a commemorative doujin craft essence that's going to increase your point drops by 10%. There are many different commemorative craft essences and which ones appear for you on day 7 depends on how many points you've collected and of which type. This chart goes over that in more detail if you're curious. The doujin craft essences are mostly just collectibles, they don't really have an effect outside of a small boost to your point drop rates, but they are really cute and fun so they're worth collecting. Make sure you read the descriptions on each of them. And finally, let's talk about how you unlock Jolter Berserker. You will receive a temporary copy of her at the beginning of the event, but she will become permanent once you beat the main story, which requires that you have about 900,000 points and that you beat the final boss on day 7. You can get her ascension materials, the black feather pens, by getting 50,000 of each point and buying one copy at the shop. This will allow you to max ascend her. In order to get her to Noble Phantasm 5, you're going to need to clear all of the raid quests which appear after the final boss fight, and we'll cover those in part 2. So with the story elements out of the way, let's touch on the best strategies for farming. Thankfully, for as complex as this event can be mechanically, the point and shop currency farming is very easy and simple. There are a number of bonus servants that you can bring to the event that will increase the amount of point drops you get from each free quest. Jean the Arc Berserker, Jean Archer, and BB Summer will increase your drops by 30%, while Mosh, Maeve Summer, Robin Hood, Ibaraki, Caster Gill, Ushi Assassin, Dantes, and MHXX will increase point drops by 20%. And finally, all of the other Summer Servants from the other events will increase your point drops by 10%. In addition to those servants increasing the drop rates, there's also going to be craft essences that increase drop rates for both the shop currencies and the points. If you're looking to increase the drop rate of the shop currencies, Emerald Float and Hero on the Beach will increase the BB currency by 1, Raging Wind and Sunset Jam will increase the Mimi currency drop by 1, and All Night Fever and Rider's High will increase the Gill currency drops by 1. As for increasing the point drops, 
Water Shine will increase the ink drops by 30%, Painting Summer will increase the paper drops by 30%, and Foxy Lady will increase the hat point drops by 30%. The best way to go about farming this event is first and foremost trying to get the 3 star craft essence from the friend point gacha. This will help you out a bit with farming the currency so that you can buy the craft essences from the shop. You should focus on getting all of the shop craft essences ASAP. They are the most important things by far and they will drastically speed up the rate of your farming. Make sure you do not max limit break the shop CEs because having 3 or more copies of each CE is going to give you much more of a bonus than max limit breaking it does. So make sure you keep all of these point drop CEs separate until the end of the event. The gacha craft essences like Emerald Float and Raging Wind aren't as important as the shop CEs due to the importance of the point ladder in this event. Once you have enough of the shop currency in order to purchase all of the CEs, you should switch to just farming for points. This way you'll be able to unlock stuff as quickly as possible. As for where you should farm for points and currency, there are many places and keep in mind that some of these free quests won't appear until you've looped at least once. If you're looking to farm ink points, those are going to be available at the Honolulu Airport, Kawa, Shoal, and the Volcano. If you farm them at the Honolulu Airport, you're going to encounter Saber enemies, and the drops are going to be the Gill Currency, Bicorn Horns, Phoenix Plumes, and Bullets. At Kawa, you're going to be facing Archer enemies, and you'll be receiving the Mimi drops, as well as Divine Wine and Phoenix Plumes. Shoal is going to have the Caster enemies and the BB Currency drops, as well as Lamps, Seashells, and Plumes. And finally, the Volcano Free Quest is going to have Lancer enemies, and it's going to drop Gill and Mimi Currency, as well as Reverse Dragon Scales. Now I should mention that it doesn't really matter which stage you farm for points at, as the drop rates are all roughly the same. So you should pick where you farm at based on what enemies you're going to be encountering at that stage, as well as what currency and ascension materials drop from that stage. So for example, if you have a lot of strong Archer Servants, you might want to farm the Honolulu Airport, but if you need a lot of Reverse Dragon Scales, maybe you should farm the Volcano. The choice is up to you, this event is actually surprisingly flexible and friendly when it comes to farming. Next up we have the hat points. These are going to drop at Kukana Loco, Coco Head, Waikiki Street, and Mana Loa. If you choose to farm for hat points at Kukana Loco, you'll be facing Berserker enemies, and you'll be receiving Gill Currency drops as well as Chaos Talons, Gears, and Phoenix Plumes. Coco Head is going to have Archer enemies and drop the Mimi Currency, as well as Bloodstone Tears, Spinal Fluid, and Phoenix Plumes. Waikiki Street is going to have Assassin enemies and drop the BB Currency, as well as Black Grease, Phoenix Plumes and Heroes Proof, and Mauna Loa is going to have Saber enemies and drop the BB and Gill currencies, as well as drop Spirit Roots, Forbidden Chains, and Phoenix Plumes. And finally, the Paper Currency is going to be farmable at the Diamond Head, Waikiki Beach, Hilo, and Mauna Kea. Diamond Head is going to have Lancer enemies and drop the Gill Currency as well as Scarabs and Phoenix Plumes. Waikiki Beach is going to have Rider enemies and drop the Mimi Currency as well as Longu Nose, Eternal Frost, and Phoenix Plumes. Hilo is going to have Saber enemies and drop the BB Currency as well as Hearts of a Forbidden God and Snake Jewels. And Mauna Kea is going to have Berserker enemies and drop the Mimi and BB Currencies as well as Gallstones and Octuplet Crystals. So again, where you farm is very flexible and it depends on your setup and what ascension materials you're looking for. Just remember to farm the hardest version of each free quest if you can. Remember, the more difficult the challenge, the better the drop rates. And that covers just about everything I have to say about part 1 of this event. Don't let the complicated mechanics fool you. The strategy is very simple, you just keep farming for points until new stuff is unlocked. If you're ever at a loss for where to go, just keep on farming points and make sure to reset on day 7 by doing the 0 AP quest, and then rinse and repeat. Also make sure that you diversify your point farming, you want to farm all 3 of these points, it's better to have 200,000 of each point than it is to have 600,000 orange points for example, because different points can open different quests. Make sure you go for that 3 star craft essence in the gacha, and then make sure you purchase all of the event craft essences in the shop as soon as possible, but do not max limit break them. 
You can choose where to farm based on your own point and ascension material needs and your team comp. There are many ways to farm this event, so do make use of that flexibility. And if you have any questions, don't be afraid to ask me down below in the comments. I'll try my best to get to as many of them as I can because I know how needlessly complicated and obscure this event can be. So be on the lookout for part two. And if this video did help you and you enjoyed it, please do consider liking and subscribing so you can catch all my videos as they go up. If you haven't already, do join the party over on our Discord and follow us on Twitter. Also make sure you follow us on Twitch as we will be doing a lot more streaming there going forward. In fact, we're going to be streaming the event all day on Monday over on Twitch and rolling the gacha as well, so do join us there if you want. But until next time, this has been Sobroni, signing out. Later.